Welcome to the Intelligence Briefing Live, What's the Buzz? Where leaders and hands-on experts share how they have turned hype into outcome. Today, we'll talk about taking a common sense approach to AI. And who better to talk to about it than someone who's worked with a lot of different companies on just that, Johan Stein. Hey, Johan, thank you so much for joining. Andreas, thank you. It's a wonderful and lovely privilege to be with you today. Hey, I'm so glad you're able to join um, because, you know, I, I can't believe that this is already the 10th episode of What's the Buzz, uh, and, and I'm really stoked about that. So I also want to say thank you, actually a big thank you to those of you um, in the audience for all your questions and feedback and engagement over the last few months. Uh, I'm really having a lot of fun with it, and I hear from you that you're getting a lot of value out of it as well. So let's continue on that path. Um, and Johan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, um, and, and what your focus is around AI. Cool. Andreas, firstly, let me say, I, I love following your work and we, we chat often on WhatsApp and on emails. Um, it's exciting to be involved with somebody like you. Great honor to be here today. Um, I've worked for some of the large management consulting and audit firms. The last few weeks, I've been uh, doing my own thing. I'm a freelance AI and automation consultant. I also work with some startups where I mentor them and help them. And I do a lot of work in the rural areas and with uh, poor and orphanaged and um, vulnerable children. So the whole AI for good kind of lens, if you would. And then I also write a lot for, for Reuters and for other magazines and newspapers. And I do some work in academia with four different universities. But I think to sum it up, my passion is using AI for good for the future of our children. That really is what keeps me up at night, uh, Andreas. That's an awesome cause. I'm, I'm again, so excited to, to have you on. And we, we met through Swiss Cognitive uh, at, at the beginning of the year and, and had already talked about uh, some of these things there. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to also learning from you and, and getting your perspective and, and for you to share your perspective with the audience, especially what you're seeing in uh, your home country of South Africa and, and, and the continent Africa as a whole, because I feel it's it's really an underrepresented and undertold story um, mm -hmm. that, that we see in, in, in the media, uh, if it if it bubbles up in, in Western media. Um, but hey, it, it really sounds like you've uh, been in, involved and are invo involved in a lot of different things and, and have seen different aspects of, of AI. Um, so for those of you joining the stream, drop a comment in the chat um, where you feel we need more common sense for AI. And we'll, we'll pick it up in a few minutes here. Um, but to get started, Johan, should we play a little game to kick things off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let me see. This game is called Fill in the Blank. And when I hit the buzzer, the wheels will start spinning. When they stop, you see a sentence. And I'd like you to complete it with the first thing that comes to mind and why. Fill in the blank. And to make it even more interesting, you'll only have 60 seconds for your answer. Okay. Awesome. Hey, I, I hear those children in the background. That's beautiful. Oh, um, I love it. I've got there's so many kids here. And you know what? It's irritating sometimes, but it reminds me that they are why I do what I do. <laughs> I hope it's not too loud, though. Not at all. That's, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So again, for, for those of you watching us live, um, please drop your answer in, in the chat and why when Johan fills in the blank. Um, but now, are you ready for what's the buzz? Give it to me. OK, perfect. Then let's see. If you're just getting started with AI, dot, 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 mm. fill in the blank. Don't just focus on the technical. Um skills think about the business and societal applications it's sometimes more important than just the technical skills that was a very short answer perfect um <laughs> what do you what do you feel it is more important to uh, to focus on business than just technology yeah. what do you see Look, no, it's a great question, Andreas. Look, I've worked with some exceptional people across the world, but even here in South Africa, the startups and, and young people equivalent to the best you can get in Silicon Valley, I think. The problem is a lot of them are so technical. 
that you should almost hide them somewhere in the room and put pizza under the door because they can't speak to business owners. They don't know how to translate the value of their products or platforms in business or societal terms. So yes, you have to continually upskill your technical skills, but we do AI or automation for a reason. Don't forget what that reason is. It's not just a tech. It's, it's a reason, and that's often a business reason, and I think that's why it's important. Perfect. Great summary. Huh? In, um, to your point, that's where you then really make an impact if you tie it to the business and, and make it tangible. Mm -hmm. um, so hey, let's let's jump into the, the first question. Um, I, I know you've been a consultant, and, and you've seen dozens of companies embark on their AI journey. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, what's the worst issue you've seen leaders make when they start in investing in, in AI? And maybe we've already touched a little bit on, on it with focusing on technology more than business. But I'm curious if, if there are others or what if this is particularly unique or important um, from, from your perspective doing projects in, in Africa? Absolutely. Just two quick shout outs before I answer. Firstly, Emma Rulov, I saw a comment. Wonderful channel. I've been on it before doing great work. And then obviously Livia uh, from uh, Swiss Cognitive. Thank you for saying hi. Lovely to see you ladies here. Um, so Andreas, look, I think we, I think business leaders think that digitization or automation or AI is the remit of some people in the dark corners of the technology department. It is the, the most powerful technology we've ever created. It is still quite limited, but it's it's gr growing exponentially. It should be a senior leadership, a C-suite responsibility. And se about 70, 70% 70 of business leaders globally have no clue what this technology is about, how it will change the organizations, how they need to upskill their people, how they will interact with their customers. So that it's not the technology. It's the business understanding of using the right tools for the right reason in the right way, where I often see that this technology fails. It's, and that's why we speak about common sense today. It, and it's maybe not that common, but forget the tech, forget the platforms, just take a breath and step back. Why are we doing what we're doing? And I often say I fixed more problems over the last five years with Excel than with AI. And I fixed more problems with people understanding their jobs, fixing toxic cultures than with automation. So the technology is important, Andreas, but the greater picture of the whole organization and the, uh, the beauty of humanity and, and what we can offer and what we fear, that is the picture I think we often forget in this whole pursuit to automate and AI everything. Fantastic. Um, I, I remember you, you shared an article a couple of days ago um, about voice assistants in, in Africa picking up or especially not being able to, to pick up different accents or, or different local languages. Um, what are some of the other things where, where you see where, where it's very specific to, um, to, to Africa where things are, are they disadvantaging, uh, disadvantaging the, the population or whether they're not as, as far developed or not taking it so much into consideration as, as they should? Oh, thank you. Let me just kill this call. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's a piece. Of, I was blessed to publish my first piece with Reuters, um, Andreas, about the, the disadvantage that Africans have in our data sets around conversational AI. There are approximately 3,000 different languages and dialects in Africa. Obviously, most of the conversational AI platforms are English or some of the major European language or Arabic, potentially, or even Chinese. But how do we serve people in their local dialect and language in this continent? Even when we speak about breast cancer research or prostate cancer or lung cancer research, as an example, a lot of the data sets are predominantly Northern American or European. And, and they are largely applicable, but there are also nuances around the diseases people suffer in Africa that's not served by these data sets. So there are a lot of initiatives by Africans, and, and I'm very proud of them, who are creating data sets in, in the language gates, often from scratch, to make sure that we have the right data for these models to learn from and to serve our local populace. You know, and then there's also the question about uh, almost like a colonization by China and others taking over the digital world of this continent and, and it's already taken over a lot of our natural resources and mining and energy and the like 
But what will our children, what will my eight-year-old son be left with in 30 or 40 years from now if we don't regulate this better? If we don't as Africans, I'm not saying reinvent the wheel, let's use the wonderful platforms built in the US and in Europe and elsewhere. But we have to build on top of that to make sure that it is applicable for the specific societal and business needs of our continent. And I can do this for hours, this topic I'm very passionate about, but I'll stop there for now. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for, for your perspective. And uh, I, I, I think I can see and the audience can see your passion uh, definitely as, as well. Um, and it's a it's it, it's a very key topic that you that you raised there. Um, you know, making data sets more um, more diverse, uh, catering not just for for individual regions uh, as, as well. Um, maybe if if we pivot a little bit to, towards business, um, you know, say you're in in finance or in procurement, you're probably not that deep into AI. Um, in you know, when you hear AI, it's it's probably either the headlines of AI gone bad that come to mind, or it's the Hollywood movies where AI destroys humanity. Yes. Um, but m making it more real and, and more tangible from from your experience, having worked with different companies um, in, in in that space on, on these topics, how have you seen companies actually get genuine buy-in from um, from their employees and from their team members to do AI uh, in in that it is not destroying humanity? But it, that it is real and delivers value. What a great question, Andreas. Look, again, don't let it be a technology-led initiative. It must be a people-first initiative supported by technology and the technology department. People naturally fear things they don't know. We are all like that. And to your point, Hollywood, we think of Terminator, we think of the, the robot with the red eyes and smoke coming out of its nose. Um, and a lot of people still think of it. I mean, if you just Google the word AI, in an image search, it's most likely humanoid robots or anthropomorphized robots, and we know it's it's code and and it's it's an ambivalent technology. It's created neutrally. It's how we use it that makes it good, or that makes it bad, at least for now. So I tell my customers: start small, pick the right initiatives that will make life easier for your staff and your customers. The best change management is the so-called water cooler chat or people in the smoking balcony or in the, in the virtual world, it's, it's a bit more difficult. But once people start talking about the fact that I'm actually enjoying my job more, I don't have to do all this repetitive nonsense. These digital assistants and conversational AI agents are really helping me. It is what I often call taking the robot out of the human, because there are still many things that technology can't do that only humans can do and the other way around. Intuition, experience, looking at a human being in the face, a customer saying, are you really okay? How can I help you? We can't automate that. You know, so that's the key thing. Make sure that we use the technology for the, what the technology is good at, set the humans free to do what we are good at and start small so that people can learn to trust this technology, to see that it's a benefit. Don't go in with some sort of a big bang approach. And lastly, don't let the technologists lead this, let them support you. Let business lead this. I hope that helps. <laughs> For some reason I can't hear you, Andreas, sorry. Oh my word, can you hear me? Let me quickly check my settings. It's funny, we speak about AI and then uh, technology fails us. I just want to quickly check my settings here. I don't know, I can't hear you. <laughs> I see there's some others that say they can't hear you, Andreas, on the, the text chat. Oh, it says you might be on mute. Oh, there's a thank you. I'm glad you can hear me. <laughs> oh, the joys of technology. I always say one day when I work in tech, I won't have these problems. Thanks, Denise. At least you can hear me. I don't know what it might be on your side, Andreas. Otherwise, we must chat in the 
chat is, box. Is this good now? Oh, there we is go. Better? I can hear you. Okay, okay perfect. Good. All right, so, the, the beauty of life. Um, <laughs> we're just chatting about this <laughs> backstage before we went live. Um, so that's awesome. I was going to say it seems like that perspective really resonates um, on, also with with Denise here, um, saying you know bringing people in, uh, connecting them, showing them the the greater um, benefit in an objective. Now to, to to wrap it up, our, our third question. Um, you know, if, if you put all of this together, I'm, I'm wondering what project comes to mind and um, that you've seen either be super successful or not, and and for what reason. There's an example I often use, Andreas. It's so simple that it's laughable, but it, it illustrates the point. I work with a large hospital group here in South Africa. It's about 83 different hospitals. They wanted to automate and AI their front desk operations when patients walk into the hospital. And um, after investigating it, I realized that the printer is too far away from the administrative staff. So with every patient um, engagement, they had to walk to the printer three times. So we moved the printer closer. It increased their productivity with 320%. No AI, no robotic process automation, common sense. So before we dive into all these platforms, and these platforms are incredible, think about what will make the life of your workers easier. And don't make decisions on the executive level. Actually spend time, have a coffee with your administrative people, with the people whose jobs you're trying to automate, because they have insights about what will make their lives easier that you as an executive will never know. So that's why I say start with the people, then bring in the technology. It's so common sense, but I often want to just slap my customers through the face because we never, never remember this. <laughs> That's that's awesome, and some solutions can be so simple, right? And, and they can be right in in front of you, but you don't see them uh, immediately. Um, so hey, we're getting close to the end of the stream, and I was wondering if, if you could summarize the the key three points from from our talk today that you wouldn't want to leave our audience with. Okay, Andreas, look, wow. Firstly, this technology is incredible. It's advancing a lot faster than we think. It will never replace human nature or and experience and intuition and always 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 start with people first and take them on the journey with you because people will always be more important than technology and i understand that we are on businesses and we're not in a kumbaya world we've got shareholder pressure but why can't we both make life better for our people and be a lot more profitable business at the same time. It must be possible. That's a beautiful statement to, to end on. Thank you so much for, for the summary. Thanks for joining and for sharing your experience and, and for those in the audience for learning with us today. Um, Jan, it, it, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you. It's been amazing, Andreas. Thank you. Good luck and keep I'll keep on supporting what you do on this channel. Great privilege. Awesome. Thank you so much. Folks in the audience, see you next time for another round of the Intelligence Briefing Live. What's the buzz? Bye-bye.